I'm definitely not the quickest. I'm far from the fittest. A lot of other people on this show have got a lot more intelligence than I have. And then it comes to the traitor. I'm going to find out who you are. I'm going to watch every move you make. I'm going to bring you down. This is day one of a journey of intrigue and adventure. These 12 people have never met before. 11 of them are genuine contestants, and each of them is hoping to win up to $300,000. But the 12th person isn't a contestant at all. He or she is a traitor. He or she is the mole. The mole's task is to secretly undermine everyone's money-winning efforts without ever being discovered. For the 11 genuine contestants, the only way to win all the money is to correctly identify who amongst them is the traitor. Who amongst them is the mole. As you know, one of you is a traitor. For the next 23 days, one of you will be doing whatever he or she can to stop the rest of you winning money. You've only just met. But who amongst you has what it takes to betray the rest? Which one of you is the traitor? Oh, that's Bob. You're 37 yeah, and a yeah. truck driver. Yep. You're a straightforward man, but you have a mean streak. Half the people are truly numbnuts. They don't deserve to be in a game. And if it's mean streak, on a few minor people to get through where I've got to get to. I'll do it. <laughs> Tao, 21, and a law student, a bright spark. You're not everything you seem to be. People really mistake me. They think I'm, you know, just a pass off as just, ah, uh, yada, yada, yada. But really, got, you know, I can really get sneaky with people. <laughs> John, you're 72, a former businessman in Naval Reserve, now retired but still very, very active. If anyone has the maturity to betray the others, it's you. <laughs> Elena, you're 21 and you work in insurance. You're smart enough to be the mole, and you'll do whatever it takes to get what you need. I'm very outspoken if I think someone's doing something um, in a way that I wouldn't do it or in a way that I think is wrong, I would definitely say something about it. David, the extrovert stonemason, what about you? Yeah, they're an extroverted person, and uh, I'd like to get on there. Also, I'd like to uh, win the big dollars as well, and I'd like to uh, try and out with the, the other rascals and uh, get amongst it. Are you the kind of person who'll stab the others in the back? Or are you too much of a joker to be the mole? Then there's Yasmin, 19 years old and a world-class swimmer. Sugar-coated on the outside, but with a rock-hard centre. When I want something, I will step on anyone to get to it, pretty much. You've been psyched out in the pool, but that's nothing compared to the mind games you're about to face. <laughs> Joe, the 26-year-old bodybuilder. You don't look like a trader, but could that bodybuilding just be a good disguise? Time will tell. Crystal Rose. 21 years old, a model, and you wouldn't let anyone cross you. It really annoys me when someone decides to backstab me. If someone has a problem with me, I'd like them to come up and tell me to my face. You hate backstabbing, Crystal Rose. But unless you're the mole, you're going to have to get used to it. <laughs> Pete the bodyboarder, 22 years old and laid back. A thinker, a quiet achiever, possibly a traitor. And Marie, you're an estate agent. You're 60 and you're as sly as they come. Sometimes if I'm a real snake, I can stay back and I think, wait, it might take me a year to get you, but I'll get you. <laughs> Mark the lawyer. You're 25, clever with words and used to arguing your own way. If anyone can play mind games, Mark, it'll be you. And finally, Janet, 45 years old, a makeup artist and a mum. Are you a genuine contestant, Janet? Or are you the mole? I don't think I could be the mole. Um, that, that's not in me, that, to be devious and try to sabotage other people. Well, that's what we'd expect the mole to say, wouldn't we? 
a convincing act or are you genuine? No matter. We have plenty of time to discover who is genuine and who is the traitor. In the cabin on board your boats, you'll find wetsuits. Please put them on. We have an assignment to do. I'll see you shortly. The contestants earn prize money by doing assignments. It's these assignments that the traitor, the mole, will secretly undermine in an effort to restrict how much money is won. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Your first assignment is for $10,000. You'll be taken up in this helicopter in pairs, flown out to sea and asked to simulate a rescue jump two at a time. You'll leave the helicopter 10 metres above the water. That's the equivalent of a three-storey building. If all 12 of you complete the assignment successfully, you win $10,000. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll see you at the other end. You'll hear me go, three, two, one, drop. Feet out and straight together. You want to enter the water in a pin drop. As soon as my hand hits yours, you have a second to leave. Right. If you don't leave, you will pull back into the aircraft and you have failed this assignment. Right. To win the money, they must all jump out of the helicopter. Oh, come on, guys. Tao, the law student, is feeling nervous. When they said, you're going to jump out of the helicopter, I absolutely went nuts. My worst fear is heights. And for them to be standing there telling me, you're going to be jumping out of a helicopter 10 metres high in the ocean, that really, really killed me. It's the men who are to jump first. Uh, lifting up out of the helicopter reminded me of like, all those NAM movies. That was a great feeling to finally get to do that. Pete bodyboards extreme waves, so for him, jumping out of a helicopter isn't an issue. I think it was a pretty tame height. Like, 10 metres wasn't, like, really that high out of a helicopter. Like. Ready? Three, two, one, jump, dive into the water. Three, two, one, go. I mean, come on, you need to jump out of a helicopter. 30 feet up in the air, <laughs> an awesome buzz. It's a way to start off what could be a really good, you know, a really good time. Three, two, one, bang. I've never been on a helicopter, and as exciting as it is, it's scary. It's very scary. So my first reaction was one of fear, sort of anxious fear. And it's a feeling that I'm not used to. I'm used to being in control, and I'm governing what happens in my life. Three, two, one, go. Diving in the water. Three, two, one, go. Diving in the water. And he's OK. Clear to move away. All six men have jumped, but the group will only win the $10,000 if all six of the women also jump. Anne-Marie's first. She's a 60-year-old estate agent. The actual physical thing that we did was absolutely extraordinary, and to have the opportunity to do it was just was absolutely brilliant. At my age uh, and my um, little rotund figure, um, I figured I did OK. One, jump. Elena went next, then Yasmin. Yasmin's an international level swimmer, and she's one of the most competitive in the group. I'm here to be friends with everybody, but remember that this is a game and there is $200,000 at the end of it, and I want to get it. Diver in the water. Next one. Okay, diver's ready. Three, two, one, go. Diver's in the water. In the final helicopter is Tau the most nervous of them all. If Tao doesn't jump, they'll miss out on $10,000. did it it was a huge huge personal achievement for me i was i was really really proud of myself the last to jump is janet the 45 year old makeup artist they've won the money 
But the girls don't yet know it. They're yet to find out whether or not all the men have jumped. I take it by the smile on all your faces that you all jumped? Yes. yes. Any of you have any second thoughts? Yeah, I did beforehand, but um, the pressure of the team, you know. Yeah, that's right. Because oh, Bob was like, anyone who doesn't jump has to face me. And I was like, oh, I don't want to face Bob. No, anyone, anyone but Bob. Well, girls, a lot of it comes down to beginnings. A good beginning could see a very fruitful end. Do you want to have a look and see how you've done? A successful assignment for the contestants, less so for the mole. Perhaps the mole, who is trying to undermine everyone else's efforts, is yet to strike. First assignment complete, $10,000 in the kit. Well the day, however, is but young. It's time to party. We have an assignment for you. You'll obviously need to get changed, especially since you'll be catching a plane in two hours. Oh, the girls have a room. Oh. Oh. The boys have a room. <laughs> In the rooms, you'll find the luggage. Get changed. There is one problem, however. You have too much luggage. On the good side, we're prepared to give you $100 for every kilogram of luggage you unpack. Oh, my That's gosh. your assignment. I'll see you at the airport in two hours. Yeah. They must repack their luggage into new bags, leaving behind everything they can do without. For each kilogram of luggage they leave behind, we'll put $100 into the kitty. It sounds simple, but as they're about to find out, it's not their own luggage they're repacking. This is not funny. We couldn't find our bags. What? Are you serious? It's more for me. I think that only... Shopping. How many would they need, honestly? You had given our bags to the guys and the guys' bags to us. That's cozies. <laughs> Check out Crystal's pants. It was such an invasion of privacy and my rights just went out the window. Their assignment is to reduce their luggage and they'll earn $100 for each kilo they leave behind. But only now do they realise that it's not their own luggage they're repacking. This is not funny. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Maybe we have to uh, sacrifice the stuff in the girls' bags, guys. What are they going to cut out for us? Oh, I can't believe the stuff they're going to see in my pool. I've got the guys' stuff oh, and they've got ours. David's got air marie's gear. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've got towels. This is Bob's bag, I remember. And he only packed 12 kilograms already. What am I going to take out? It was unbelievable just thinking that someone's going through your underwear, your personal oh, oh. belongings. Whatever you get, jammies or not? No. The whole time, I was just thinking in my head, please, 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 please don't get my Elmo. It's in a towel's bag. That's gone. Oh, gosh. I bought girl, girl, girl stuff. This is ridiculous. It's just I cannot touch and cannot handle. No. I can't take this. Mark, how far do I want to go? While Bob and Tao are repacking each other's bags, Joe, the bodybuilder, is repacking Crystal Rose's bag. And she is repacking his bag. Oh, so embarrassing. Oh, what the hell is this? What is that? What is it? How long is it going to chuck him under his bag? Oh, it's so funny. This is Joe's bag. This is Joe's. It's bodybuilding protein. Oh, my gosh. It's a bodybuilding protein. It's more fat free tuna. He doesn't need Steve. He should. We don't. Oh. I couldn't find Joe's undies. Oh, my God. Crystal's having fun with Joe's bag. Joe's being a bit more serious with Crystal's bag. It's very hard to eliminate a lot of clothes from a model. I was like, you have got to be joking. There's so many things in that bag that are so personal. Like, not just, you know, your bras and undies. Hot pants. Pajamas. Should look very sexy in these. Every piece of item in your, you know, in your luggage, you hand select it. Check out Crystal's pants. Woo! Wow, we very hippie. Not for them to go through it and judge what you need and you don't need. She's definitely wearing this. <laughs> she doesn't kill me. This is really hard. One, two, he's got ten. Elena, got ten the insurance ten. advisor, is repacking Mark's bag. I'll give him five. Where the hell do I start? But more to the point, Mark is repacking Elena's bag. How many bras? <laughs> <laughs> Push up. 
It's a bit small for me. My girlfriend's gonna hate it because I was pulling out G-strings and I was putting on brass. But you know, you're in the, you're there in the moment and your adrenaline's charging through you. I think I've got a, a department <laughs> store. <laughs> so is it two brass? Oh, two brass. Oh, always need a black pair, don't they? But I felt a bit uncomfortable having to make decisions about pairs of underwear, about bras. I didn't put them all in and I felt a bit guilty about that because underwear's very personal. But, you know, I was thinking about the money. Well, let's get the kilos down. Nice, <laughs> Every kilogram they take out is worth $100 to the group's prize kitty. If they're ruthless, it's an easy way for them to make money. Denim jacket, one people. Chuck it. Okay. These ones? Oh, these ones. Heavier ones. Yeah, this is. No, oh, we're going to the stage. Don't need it. John has Harry Potter books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think outfits as well. No, forget outfits. You can tell a man by his undies. Oh my gosh. He said Bob, so he's like, I'm no fuss sort of bloke. He's got it. I'm folding his undies for him. Right, we're just about right here, guys. Come on, we've got to get going. They're racing the clock because in less than an hour they'll be catching a plane and they still have to make it to the airport and check in. Gentlemen, how'd you do? Pretty well, I think. Pretty yeah. good. Pretty well. We lower their weights. <laughs> now, were you ruthless? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you were very ruthless. Well, let's <laughs> see just how ruthless you were. David? Yep. And Marie's bag? Yes. Before was 16 kilos. Right. Oh, we'll call that 10 kilos. Nice well, work. It's a gain right? of 6 kilograms. Worked very well done. Yeah, that's 600. Joe? Crystal Rose's bag. Yeah, it's very harsh as a model, you must remember. <laughs> <laughs> this bag started at 19. Here we go. Well, be kind and call that 11 kilos. Gain of 8 kilos. <laughs> John, you had Yasmin's. Yes, I did. All right, Yasmin's weighed in at 19 as well Hello. before you got to it. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> 10 kilos. Well wow. Oh. Oh. That one is Elena's. How's Elena going to feel about you? Not very well. Right, OK. That started at 15 kilos. Really? Nine. Not bad. Nine Gain nine. of six. Well done, mate. Pete, Janet's back. Yeah. Started at 15. <laughs> 12, mate. Ah. <laughs> and last but definitely not least, Robert. Cow. She's going to love me. <laughs> started at 20. 20? Is that all it was? Down to 12. Eight off. Right. Fantastic. Well done, boys. Now, shall we see what the girls did to you? Where are they? They're coming. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome to Mole Air. Nervous at all going through the boys' things? No, no, no. Not through their things. Not through their things. Nervous about them going through our through things. Our yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> yes, I have some news for you there. The good news is the boys didn't have any trouble going through your luggage. They managed to put $4,000 into the kitty. 40 kilograms of your luggage oh is gone. Two people's bags. I know. So let's see if you were equally ruthless. Elena, whose bag did you have? Max. Okay. Let's check him in. He started at 16 kilos. Nine. A gain of seven. Well done. Anne Marie. David. David's bag. Yes. Started at 14. Seven. Crystal Rose. Yes. Now you Joe. had a task. Joe. Joe. <laughs> Started at 24 kilos. Watch. Watch. Yeah. Ten. <laughs> Janet? Yes. Pete's bag? Started at 11. Oh, nine. 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 Only two kilos <laughs> off. Oh, that's oh. worse. What are you doing? Tell. Robert's bag? I was really nice because he didn't have anything to begin with. Well, he started at 16 <laughs> and he finished at 12. <laughs> and finally, Yasmin. Had John's. John's started at 20. <laughs> and finished oh. at 10. Yeah. 44. <laughs> That's $4,400 from the girls. A total of $8,400. i tell you what, since you've worked so hard, it rounded up to $9,000. Well done. What a 
Now, if you'd like to check in and uh, have a chat to the guys about your luggage, yes. straight through there. They've taken out nearly 90 kilograms from each other's bags. That's a lot of personal possessions, and they're about to confront each other. They took out my bunny, <laughs> so I can't cuddle it to go to bed. Nearly 90 kilograms of luggage has been removed from their bags. But it's only now they get to find out what they'll have to do without. 44! What's 44? 44 kilos. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, 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 <laughs> There's one item in particular that Tao is desperate to have. Her Elmo doll. You lost eight kilos. Eight kilos. Yep. Wow. Very important eight. thing. I hope you didn't take this out. I'll die. <laughs> Did you take my Elmo out? Oh, Tickle me up, aren't you? Did you? Is gone. Oh, no! <laughs> oh my Elmo! <laughs> Crystal Rose cut Joe's luggage down by 14 kilograms. Most of it in bodybuilding health food. Chocolate bars are gone. I gave you two so you can ration. Oh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> leaves me four for the <laughs> Your pink tuna's gone. <laughs> um, my pink shirt? No, sorry, that was... Nah, oh, no one not my pink shirt. For Joe, the problem was in choosing which clothes to take out of a suitcase belonging to a model. I took uh, the hippie jeans out, <laughs> your jean jacket, and you had several tops. I was trying to coordinate you. Okay, Plus, I kept your formal wear, plus your shoes, but I took your ballerina shoes out. Okay. I'm okay, that's good. Yeah. John, the 72-year-old retiree, had Yasmin's suitcase to repack. You see, they have underwear, shorts, and tops. Yep. Your underwear is intact. Cool. Your uh, shorts, if there were seven there, I gave you four. Okay, yeah. And your tops I halved. Your books are gone and your Walkman's gone. Oh. Colour coordination, I really got confused. <laughs> Mark, the lawyer, seemed to have fun going through Elena's luggage. Your underwear, I took out five kilos and left the other five. I took out your green thongs, but I left the black heels in. That's cool, yeah. I also left your black evening dress. Okay, cool. <laughs> They've won $9,000 in the assignment, but they haven't been totally honest with each other. It won't be till later that night that they get to open their bags and see what possessions have really been left I behind. I checked my bags. I came to find that I had one pair of underpants left for a possibility of a month. If I could have got my hands on that, David, I seriously probably would have brained him. I cannot believe that he was so vile. Anne-Marie is just absolutely, I could tell she is fuming. I did feel pretty bad, but I think, what's the bloody point in worrying about it? The thing's done, move forward, don't be too concerned about it now, so I'm totally freaking over it. They took out my bunny, <laughs> so I can't cuddle it to go to bed. I left. There's a pack of three bunnies on a lift. One bunny with my 12-year-old daughter and the other bunny with my husband. If I'm crying like this after day one, I hate to think what I'm going to be like after about a week or so. But um, we'll see how we go. Uh, but the adventures are great. OK, I'm out of here. See ya. The end of day one. Day two. The Gwaida River in northern New South Wales. Much of the time, the Gwaida is relatively placid, but a touch of a button can turn the river into a torrent. Good day, Grant. Oh, it looks scary. Oh, good morning. Morning. Behind you is the Copeland Dam. Below us, the Gwaida River. Your assignment for $10,000 is to raft a section of this quiet river. Doesn't look like too much, does it? Not at the moment. Have a look at this. Tony. You'll be asked to raft a one kilometre section of this river. If you are all remaining in the rafts at the end of the one kilometre, you win $10,000. For every person that leaves the raft inadvertently, <laughs> you lose $2,000. Good luck. Whitewater rafting down one of the fiercest rivers in Australia. 
For now, they seem excited about the prospect. But their mood will soon change. You're not going to beat me. <laughs> not that way. Not with a measly bunch of rapids, no way. And then comes the big boy, the big 14 foot drop. And I'm just thinking, we're going under. We're going under. It's all over. It's all over. We're going to get sucked under the bloody water. At the push of a button, the Gwaida River has been turned from a gentle creek into a grade five rapid, one of the most powerful rapids in the country. How you going, guys? Their assignment is to raft one kilometre down the river without anyone falling out. You guys want to come across? We'll grab helmets and life jackets now. There's $10,000 to be won, but they'll lose $2,000 from that amount for each person who falls out of the raft. Oh, OK, crews, let's load on up and start the safety talk. Jump on in. The idea of rafting is to go slower or faster than the water, not just to drift idly. Each raft has a guide but it's the contestants who must provide the power and do most of the steering. something like, grab the rope, and I'll throw a rope to you. Make sure you do a better job of catching it. If you miss the rope and you can see that you're about to go down another rapid, the most important thing is the white water flight position. That is, get feet up, feet down, stand feet together, and we'll float down the river. Once they're in the rapids, following the instructions will be vital. Respond too slowly, and the raft can easily flip. Hold on. Back paddle, come on, go, 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 go! Back paddle, hold on! So you've had your training, a little paddle, got wet, that's very nice, that's what you're in for. Any one of you, all of you can bail out right now. One of you fall in, nobody bails. All of you fall in, you miss the 10,000, you lose another $14,000 out of the 19 you've already collected. Are you sure? Yep. 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 I'm in there. You're risking a potential $24,000? Yep, we're in. Yes. All right. Which team was first? We are. Yeah. All the Anyone who falls out will cost the group $2,000. Yasmin, Elena, Mark and Pete are in the first raft. See where the water is in front, we're going to stay right over to the right-hand side. We punch through that first section, that's the first of the triple. Then we go over, we punch through the next hole, that's the second of the triple. Then we get through the third one down the bottom, and that makes us through the sections. Now, all over to the left-hand side, at any point if the water sucks us in there, we're in dire trouble. And we don't want to be in any of those types of troubles. All right? Guys, are you ready? So far, so good for the first raft. They've reached the halfway point, and they'll stay there until the others have come through before tackling the next half. In the second raft are Anne-Marie, Bob, David and Tao. If somebody falls out, straight into white water float position, and all the safety guides are on the right. So if you come up, look to the right and look for somebody throwing you a rope. It was a 
very close shave. But somehow they all stayed inside the raft. No one has yet fallen out and the $10,000 is safe so far. So basically just do everything I say. In a third raft are Janet, Joe, John and Crystal Rose. terrifying experience and you know the first thing with my mum was there goes the money there goes eight grand the water was so freaking cold my throat seized up and and i was <gasps> like gasping for breath the water was ferocious absolutely ferocious it was just so fast and you see these people yelling whatever found a rope all of a sudden i felt a pulling in and that was so magic that feeling of i'm okay i still can't breathe but i'm coming in and i've never hugged a rock so hard in my life what i remember is we went down the first dip really well and then all of a sudden we're just upside down i'm just like absolutely terrified the water alone just knocked the breath out of you and all of a sudden i just see all this white water like heading towards me i was just going under and up and under and up and i was going across rocks ramming into things under the water up over the water left right and I just thought, I'm not gonna get a rope, I'm not gonna get a rope, someone help me, help me, help me. I really thought that I would end up crushed up against some rock. I just really wanted to get out of there. I don't feel I let the team down. Not at all, not at all. Considering what we went through and everything, um, we were pretty lucky to get out of it. I was just happy that all of us got out of it pretty safe and the girls are pretty shocked, not as much as me, because I've never been through such a thing. They lost the group $8,000. Could it have been deliberate? Is one of these four people the mole? A quick check revealed a few cuts and bruises, but no permanent damage. If you decide to do it again, it's going to be double. Oh, we're going fine. You were until you turned upside down. That was the moment when it turned bad. OK, all friends are OK. They've gone back to the hotel for a little rest. They've are. lost $8,000 out of the 10000 they could have won. But the two remaining rafts are yet to complete the assignment. What do you want to do? Tao? Tao? Are you with us? Yes. Yes. Are you sure? So you don't have to. You don't have to, Tao? Tao, if you want to bail, you can bail on your own. No shame if you want to bail. We're going to get through this. All right, off we go. It's now raining and the river is rising. One raft's already gone. If they lose both the others, they'll be $14,000 in the red. $2,000 if both the remaining rafts make it to the end of the rapids. Some of the waves on this stretch are over two metres high, but it's the next rapid where they'll face the real danger. The contestants in the raft don't know it, but they're heading straight towards a drop of over four metres. made it to the end. It's now up to Bob, Tao, David and Anne-Marie. There's still $2,000 to be won for the group, but they'll miss out on it if anyone falls out.
That's the first rapid dealt with. Now for the four metre drop. made it through unscathed and they've won two thousand dollars on the assignment later that evening they each record their video diary the rafting is at the front of their minds for Tao, oh it was the God. second day in okay. a row for her to what be terrified Today, why did I break down in tears again? Oh gosh, you know, when they asked us who's gonna bail, I was just sitting there shivering to death and just having all these thoughts of being swallowed up by these monstrous waters. It was a scary thought. Man, going down in a boat with no control, working our guts out, just trying to get in a straight line. Mate, that was unreal. That was really unreal. You now down we went, we rose like a phoenix. You've never seen four people battle for their lives and all you're awake. You're not going to beat me. <laughs> not that way. Not with a measly bunch of rapids, no way. The raft flipping over cost the group $8,000. Was it an accident, or could it have been the work of the traitor? In all honesty, my first reaction was, is the mole on that boat? Um, but then I thought to myself, in reality, how could the mole have an impact on... Like, one person couldn't tip the boat. Um, they could contribute to it, but I don't think... The way that river was running, I don't think the mole could have had any serious impact on the boat tipping. Who do you suspect is the mole? If the contestants suspect the wrong person, they risk being sent home empty-handed. Tonight's one of those nights where it has absolutely got everybody crapping themselves. There's no other word for it. I'm extremely nervous. I don't want to leave. I really, really would be disappointed if I left tonight. I'll be devastated. You know, I'll feel like I've failed, which is something I don't want to do in my life. I hate failure. Someone will fail to correctly identify who the mole is, and he or she will be sent home. They must all answer ten questions about the identity of the mole. Suspect the right person, and they'll get many of the questions right. Suspect the wrong person as being the mole, and their score will be low. Whoever scores the lowest will be eliminated. So, who are the suspects? Who do they think is the traitor? At this stage, you're just really guessing, I think. You're just looking at personal traits. My first suspect could be a quite obvious is Bob. Um, I just seen, you know, a glimpse here and there, just look in the eye or just a facial expression that just made me think. I just have a, a gut feeling, a few things, that it's Mark. And Tao, she's the innocent little player in all of this. And probably looking at it from going, no, she couldn't be because she's, it's too obvious. But um, maybe that's her tactics. Someone that is on my A-list is Janet. She is a person that I think is sophisticated enough to be the mole. She can appear to be like the nicest person, but I think she's more to it than that. And I think she's somebody that like other people wouldn't suspect. Tao. Highly intelligent. If the mole is somebody that needs to gain somebody's confidence, then she's able to do it because she's a very cuddly little little person. And the more and more you speak to her, the more and more you realise just what is behind that brain of hers. Uh, Janet, she's still on top of my list. I've still got that gut feeling about her. Yasmin is my second bet. There's something about her as well. And I'll put Tao third because she's kind of like the least likely I reckon that would be the mole. Therefore, I reckon she there's a bit of a chance she may be. Janet, Elena, and probably Tao is the other one. You know, she's adorable and, you know, everyone loves her. Um, and she's, in my mind, a perfect candidate to screw us over. They've each of them answered the ten questions about the mole. Their fate is now sealed and the lowest scoring person will be sent home. Who has scored least in the questionnaire? Which one of them will be leaving? I love everybody and I'm really depressed that somebody has to go tonight. I, I've been saying all day, I'll feel sorry for the person and I'll feel sorry for myself if I leave today because I think whoever goes, it's, it's just unfair. They've been cut short. 
not one of us wants to see any one of us go. I don't want to see any one of us, the boys leave first round. No one wants to go at all, and just to think that it's you, it would be so crushing. It would be so crushing. One of these people is the mole. He or she has been secretly doing whatever they can to undermine everyone else's efforts. Each of the other 11 is desperate to work out who that person is. Who is the mole? Whoever is wrong with their suspicion, whoever has scored lowest in the computer questionnaire, is about to be sent home. Evening, everyone. Hello. Well, an incredibly successful episode. $21,000 in the kitty out of a possible $30,000. Well done. An amazing result. But this is our first elimination. Tonight, one of you goes home. I'll type your names one at a time into the computer. If the screen comes up green, you stay. If it comes up red, that means that you've been the least successful in identifying who the mole is and you have to go. Everyone clear? All right, let's begin. Bob. Crystal Rose. Mark. suspected the wrong person as being the mole. Yeah, this is too much. <laughs> Janet's a brilliant lady. She held herself together well today. Real well. We're all gonna miss her. Big time. Thank you for playing. Yeah. Of all the people that should have gone, she shouldn't have been the one. No, she's just an extraordinary lady. Just... That no, shouldn't have happened. Janet's leaving empty-handed, but the mole, as always, remains. Eleven people are left, and one of them is a traitor. One of us is gone, and the mole is still here, so... Yeah. Who's next? Who is the mole? We're going to suss you out sooner or later. We'll get you. We'll get you. Too right. Oh, hello. Next week, the traitor strikes. $1,000. $1,000. Did you come across them in your travels? One thousand dollars in prize money is stolen from under their noses. No voucher, no cash. I would have loved to have grabbed the boys' bags and them all apart to find out who the hell took that goddamn piece of paper. And a shootout in a shopping centre. Your assignment is to hunt them down using these laser guns. <laughs> their assignment is to shoot you. Three of them hunted the down. I hope I can trust these guys. One of them's a mole, are you really? There's a traitor somewhere. Who is it? Who is the mole? Join Joanna Griggs and the Auction Squad army for the makeovers that'll make you money when you sell. Auction Squad, 7.30 Fridays. 
But next, a life-changing event is about to happen to Tom Croydon. Melbourne-made Blue Healers is next on 7. an exclusive tip on who is the mole? Listen to The Cage on Triple M tomorrow afternoon and a vital clue is yours. Plus, for even more insider information, log on to themole.com.au tomorrow evening from 6 to chat live with tonight's eliminated contestant.